Hello, and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, I'm going to show you what factorials and permutations are. So let's start with the factorial notation. Now, we're going to start off with an investigation. So let's say there are three people. How many ways can they be arranged in a line? So I'm going to actually list out all the different possibilities. Okay, so you can do this by a tree if you want. So if you listed this with a tree, let's say that there were three people, A, B, and C. Okay, so if the first person was A, then the second person can be B or C. If the first person was B, they can then be A or C. If the first person was C, they could then be A or B. All right, if the first person is A and the second person is B, then the third person has to be lined up as C. If the first person is A, second person is C, then the third person is B. And we can continue with this pattern with the other parts of the tree. All right, so listing these possibilities, we can see that we have A, B, and C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, and then C, B, A. So we can see that there are six possibilities. All right, if you've already learned the fundamental counting principle, then we can also think of this as there are three people and they're gonna line up. So there are three ways to choose the first person. And then there are two ways to choose the second person. And there's only one spot left and there's only one person left. So that's one, so this also equals six. Now, when we write numbers like this in decreasing order, we can actually use a special notation called factorial notation, okay? So factorial notation is used to express a product of consecutive natural numbers in descending order from n, whatever number you start with, to one. So whatever the number is, and then we write it with this exclamation mark. It doesn't mean n, and we are very excited about it. It's n factorial, and that's how we read it as well. So in this question above, we could write three times two times one as three factorial, which then equals six. So by definition, if we have n factorial, that means we have n times one less than n, so times n minus one, and then times n minus two, and then so on. And this keeps going. Right. Zero factorial special. So zero factorial, just remember that that is equal to one. So take some time uh, to familiarize yourself with your calculator and make sure that you can find your factorial button and then everything will be a lot easier so that you don't have to go three times two times one, although that was an easy one. But when the numbers get bigger, such as this one here in our first example, we have five factorial. You could write this as five times four times three times two times one and multiply it all out. But with your calculator, if you just press five and then the factorial button, then you will just automatically get 120. Now you can always type everything out. We could type six factorial divided by four factorial, but I also want you to know that we can do some simplifying. So six factorial can be rewritten as six times five and 10 times four, three, two, one. But I'm actually gonna then stop at four factorial because I notice in my denominator, it's also four factorial. So this step, I can stop, the four factorials would cancel, and I now just have six times five, which is 30. I can do the same thing with this question over here. So I have seven factorial, that is a smaller factorial. Eight factorial can then be written as eight times seven factorial times, and in the second fraction, we're gonna go 10 times nine, times eight factorial divided by eight factorial. And then my seven factorials will cross off. My eight factorials will cross off. Okay, then I have 10 times nine 
divided by 8, but I can reduce here as well. So it's going to be 4 and 5. So I get 45 divided by 4. All right, let's extend this to factorials with variables. So here, the larger factorial is the n factorial. So I'm going to rewrite this as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and then times n minus 3, which now matches the denominator and factorial. So it's n minus 3 factorial. So I my n minus 3 factorials cross off. And so then I'm left with n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. And for simplicity, we won't simplify. All right, let's try it one more time with this one. So this is also been a tricky one. So the n minus 2 is actually the bigger factorial. So the n minus 4 factorial will stay the same in the numerator. And then we have n minus 2, n minus 3, and then n minus 4 factorial. So again, our n minus 4 factorials cross off. And then we have 1 over n minus 2, and then times n minus 3 in the denominator. All right, so now let's go on to permutations. All right, so permutations are an ordered arrangement of a subset of a particular size taken from a set of a certain size. Now that might be a little bit confusing, so I'm going to show you with an example. So one thing that's important when we are talking about permutations, order is important. So AB is different from BA. Okay. Um, also important is that the objects must be distinct or different. And then no object can be repeated. So there is a special formula for permutations. So the permutation formula states that for n different objects, if we take them r at a time, we can use the notation p bracket n r or n p r, which is equal to n factorial all divided by n minus r in brackets and then factorial. All right, now before we take a look at problems, let's actually just solve this algebraic um, equation here, just to practice using uh, this formula. So solve np3 equals a 6 times n minus 1p2. Okay, so using our permutation formula, we would state that we have n factorial, and then in the denominator, it's n minus 3 factorial equals to 6 times. And then we have n minus 1 factorial in the numerator, all divided by n minus 1 minus 2 factorial. Now we can see that the denominators are the same. They're both n minus 3. So when I multiply n minus 3 on both sides, the n minus 3s actually will cross off. So now I have n factorial equals to 6 times n minus 1 factorial. All right, so the n factorial on the left is bigger, so I can actually rewrite this as n times n minus 1 factorial equals 6 times n minus 1 factorial. And if you want to show the work, we would divide both sides by n minus 1 factorial so that these would cancel. So then we are left with n is equal to 6, which makes sense uh, because 6 P3 means that we have six objects and we're going to choose three of them. And you always want the number in front of P to be bigger than the number after P. All right, now let's take a look at some word problems that deal with or we, we can use uh, permutations. So first one, in how many ways can three books be arranged on a shelf if they can be selected from 10 books? Now, we can actually use the fundamental counting principles. I'm actually going to go back first. So we want to just pick three books and we want to arrange them on a shelf. So the order of these books are important. So one thing that we can think of is that 
there are three books that we want to choose and we're going to order them. So there are 10 books for our first choice and then nine books and then eight books. Okay, so this gives us 720. Now, another way to think of this is that we have 10 books and we want to choose three of them and we want to figure out how many ways there are to arrange them on the shelf. So this is also the same as 10 P3. Okay, now the permutation button is also on your calculator. So you should take a little bit of time to see and familiarize yourself with that. Often it is orange and it's, uh, you have to press the shift button because it's where the NCR is, which we'll look later. So you should be able to find the NPR button. Now, if we don't have that button, we can also calculate this the long way. So this would be 10 factorial divided by 10 minus three factorial. So that's 10 factorial divided by seven factorial. So this is 10 times nine times eight times seven factorial divided by the seven factorial in the denominator. And you can see that the seven factorials cross off. And you will notice now that the 10 times nine times eight is the same thing that we got when we use the fundamental counting principle. So this is also 720. All right, for practice, we won't be using the fundamental counting principle. We'll just be using permutations so that you can identify what kind of problems these are. So in this next one here, we have how many ways can a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer be selected from a class of 30 students? So order is important because someone who is president is different from someone who is secretary or treasurer, okay? So there are 30 students and then order is important. So we're gonna use P. And we're just going to choose four students, one for each of these four positions. So you type this into your calculator and you should get 657,720. All right, let's take a look at a different type of example. How many different letter words can be formed from the word picture? All right, so it doesn't say how many letters we're using. So we're going to assume that we're going to use all uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. So if there are no restrictions, and we can actually just say that there are seven factorial, or let's practice with the other permutation. We're gonna have seven letters, and we're gonna choose all seven. So this is 5,040. I'll put over here that you can also pick and go seven factorial. All right, so the next one is, the first letter must be a T. So we've already used the letter T, so we're gonna go one times. And then we have six more letters to choose from. And then um, we're gonna choose it from six letters. So six P six. So this is gonna be 720. Or if you're using factorial notation, you can think of this as one times six factorial. All right, the last one says the arrangements must end in ER. So that means that the last space must always be ER. So there's only one way to do that, okay? So that means we've used up two of the letters. We still have five letters that we're gonna choose from, and we wanna pick all five of them. So it'll be five P five times one, and this time we get 120. Using factorial notation, you can think of this as five factorial times one. And that's how you can use uh, the permutation um, to figure out how to select um, an R number of items or a certain number of items from a larger group.